Hi everyone, it's Seta here and in this video I'm going to tell you a bit about volumetric clouds so that each of you can master the basics and enchant your landscapes with clouds that you create. I won't be describing every settings in details but rather showing which parameters are responsible for each effect and what you can use it for. So let's get started. In this tutorial I will use Winter Mountains from Nature Manufacture. It's a free asset and you can download them from Asset Store. First we must add a global volume, so right click, volume, global volume. Let's create a new profile and add override, visual environment, let's select all and in sky type let's select physically based sky. Add override sky physically based sky. Let's select ground tint and add another override sky volumetric clouds. If you got this alert, you can click here and go edit project settings quality HDRP. And here you can check the volumetric clouds. OK, now let's enable all and in the state let's enable our volumetric clouds. And I want to do two more things. So click on this three dot and check if you show additional properties are enabled. And in the directional light I change the filter color to white. As you can see, our clouds have a little orange-yellow tint. It's just because they are affected by ambient light from the ground or skybox. And if we want to change this, we can go to physical based sky and change the tint of the ground. And the second options that we can use in the volumetric clouds, you can go to lightning and the ambient light probe dimmer, reduce or increase the ambient light. The third option is the scattering tint and here you can change the color. So as you can see we have three options to change the color of the clouds. The second option you want to use is a uh, local clouds. So let's enable it. Now they are not just skybox but can penetrate other object. But I will tell you more about that in the moment. Now let's focus on the distance at which clouds are generated. You can easily increase the cloud drowning distance by changing the clipping planes in both the scene and the main camera. And now our clouds are visible much further than before. We can also use the earth curvature options, which will reduce the distance at which clouds intersect horizon. If you want to change the position of the clouds, you can use the shape offset to shift the clouds in any direction. This can be useful when we want a specific part of the sky to be revealed. This works regardless of whether you're using local clouds or not. However, if you are using local clouds and want to your clouds to pass through the tall object like mountains, you need to lower the altitude. And for that purpose we are using this bottom altitude. So if we decrease this value, as you can see, now our clouds are covered the mountain. And we have another parameter here, which is the altitude range and which it you control the thickness of the layer in the clouds are generated. To better illustrate this, imagine that the entire cloud layer is represented by this red rectangle. Using the bottom altitude, we change the height above ground level, while with the altitude range, we adjust its thickness. I hope you understand this. Now when we know how to set the cloud positions, let's focus on the clouds themselves. In this tutorial I will use crowd control simple, 
and cloud preset custom. Of course, you can use any other preset that Unity make. And now in the density multiplier, we can set how density the clouds themselves will be. If we set the small value, the clouds will be less dense and we allow more light to pass through them. When we increase this value, we increase the density of the clouds, which can make them look like they do before the storm. And in the lightning section, we can decrease the sunlight dimmer. A smaller value causes the lightning to have less influence on the clouds, making them appear darker. We skip for now density curve and move to the shape factor. This value determines how many clouds will be in our sky. A lower value results in more clouds, when the higher value means fewer and smaller clouds. Our next parameter is a shape scale, and this value controls the amount of noise used to generate the clouds. So if you want to have many small clouds, simply increase this value. Next we have the erosion factor, which controls the amount of noise on the edge of the clouds. By decreasing this value, you reduce the amount of noise, making your clouds more uniform. Increasing this value adds more details to the edge of the clouds. With the erosion scale, you can increase or decrease the size of the generated noise on the edge of the clouds. So, if you increase this value, the edge of the clouds will consist the more particles, resulting the less regular shape. So, shape factor and scale controls the size and quantity of the clouds in the sky, while erosion factor and scales determinates the amount of details of the edge of the clouds we'll have. And now let's talk a little bit about density curves. Previously, I told you about bottom and range attitude, and I used the red rectangle for this. Only this time I will replace it with a different one. In fact, our earlier clouds layer contains many smaller layers within it. Using density curves, we can indicate how much cloud generating noise there should be on the one small layer. So if we click on the density curves, we get this new window. The horizontal line is responsible for subsequent layers starting from the bottom of our cloud layer, where the vertical line indicates the density of the noise generating the clouds. To better show you how this works, I first decrease the shape factor to get more clouds and then in the density curves I decrease all points to almost zero. We can now add another point by double click on the line and when we increase this we got generate uh, clouds in the bottom layer. So when we add another point here and here and increase this, we add clouds in the top layer. And of course, when we add another point here and here, we can create a cloud between top and bottom layer. At this point you should spend some time playing around with the curve settings to get the effect you want. In the shape section we have one more important option, which is erosion curves. Thanks to it we can adjust how much erosion our clouds will have. And it works the same as in the case of density curves, the horizontal line represents the cloud layer, where the vertical line is represents for how much erosion the clouds will have on the given layer. So if we want to, for example, our top layer to have a less erosion, we need just to 
decrease this value and as you can see our top layer have now less erosion. If we want our clouds to move in the wind section we can set whether the value is to be global then our wind will move at the speed we set in the visual environment or we can set it yourself by selecting manual. So if we enter here for example 1000, then our clouds will move faster. We can also increase or decrease speed of the shape and the same for erosion. We can also change the direction in which the clouds move. If we leave the settings to global, then the value will be taken from the visual environment or we can select custom and set orientation by yourself. To increase the visual level of our scene, we can also add the effect of the shadows cast by the clouds. It is worth mention that such shadows will not be randomly generated, but will exactly match the position of the clouds in relation to the sun. So to do this, just enable the shadows in the shadows section. Of course we can change the resolution of the shadows. We can change the shadow opacity and here we can change the distance at which cloud shadows will be generated. As a little bonus, remember that if you are using a newer version of HDRP, in the quality settings we have the option of perceptual blending. When you disable this option, the sun will penetrate the clouds in much more realistic way than when this option is enabled. And that's all for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, just comment me below. And. Till the next time, see ya!